All right. Good morning, everybody. Hello. So, as you may have heard, or you might be able to tell by the way this looks, this is Drama Chapel. Yay, we're excited, good. All right. So, I'm not gonna say very much, I just have a very brief introduction. Okay, first, our Drama Chapel is on the theme verse of the year, so Hebrews 12, one and two, you all know it, right? I'm gonna read it once more to remind us. Hebrews 12, one and two says, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we're going to be exploring a lot of ideas in that verse and the gist of what it means to fix your eyes on Jesus and a few different sketches. I just have a couple favors to ask you. Okay. Firstly, although this looks like a gym, and in fact is a gym, we do everything we can to make this feel like a theater for 40-ish minutes. So I would just ask that you would reciprocate that and uh, not act like it's a basketball game and your favorite players walking out on stage and go, Yo, Jerry! Or whatever, okay? Um, if you wouldn't do it, sitting at the Lesher Center or at a theater in San Francisco, just don't do it for this, okay? Um, furthermore, uh, we graciously accept earned applause and earned laughter. A lot of this is supposed to make you laugh, so don't be a afraid of that. Um, but, you know, just a little bit of theater etiquette. That's what we need. Cool. So I'm going to pray, and we're going to get started, and it's going to be super fun. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a way of worship that is uh, it's telling stories with our, our voices and our bodies, God, that we can depict the truth of your word in a way um, that is different and special and interesting. And we just pray this morning that through these scenes, the truth of your word and your spirit, God, would, would, would help us to understand more about you, more about your character, more about us and how we relate to you, God. And we just pray that Jesus would be glorified through this chapel this morning, that we would be watching with worshipful eyes, that we'd be performing with worshipful hearts, God, and that you would just make yourself look amazing. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I really do. Enjoy. Thank you so much. I'm Janice Funkelmeyer. And I'm Bert Flapjack. And you're watching Action 5 News at 5. And now for, and today's, now for today's top... For today's top, top, top stories. Top, top stories. 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 <laughs> a woman is walking her dog in Johnson Memorial Park this afternoon when a pigeon allegedly looked at her in a shifty and suspicious manner. The woman was said to have, quote, felt threatened for her own life and the life of her dog. This is just another incident in a rash of occurrences plaguing Saginaw County, where pigeons have been reported to give people reason to be concerned. The woman apparently picked up her 50-pound Labrador and sprinted through the park in order to find her escape. The pigeon is being hotly in pursued by law enforcement, but its whereabouts are currently unknown. Families and friends alike gathered downtown in Warbyville yesterday evening for the fourth most popular vegetable-themed community gathering in the tri-state area, the Brussels Sprout Bonanza. The crowds apparently exceeded 37 people. Wow, that's really remarkable, Bert, wouldn't you say? I believe that's double what they had last year, Janice. Indeed. In addition to Brussels sprouts served any way you can imagine, Brussels sprout milkshakes, Brussels sprout french fries, Brussels sprout burgers. I think they get the idea, Janice. 
Yes, well, in addition to all these Brussels sprout <sighs> delicacies, there were Brussels sprout themed music acts, Brussels sprout games, and of course the return of Sprouty, Warbyville's town mascot. A good time was had by all, and the mayor thinks it's really going to put Saginaw County on the map. And now we take you over to our exclusive Channel 5 meteorologist, Chris P. Bacon. Chris, what's the weather looking like out there today? Uh, Chris, what type of skies can we expect out there this week, buddy? Over to you, Chris. Howdy, howdy, folks. After that blazing hot weekend we just had, you can look forward to a much more temperate and pleasant week ahead. What is the matter with him? <laughs> Didn't you hear? He and Carrie broke up. He forgot it was her birthday, and she just dumped him. We're expecting some gusty patterns from the northeast to push this hot, high-pressure system we've been experiencing south, dropping temperatures by as much as 8 or even 9 degrees. Light rain could fall in Cook, Jenkins, and Harford counties. Some scattered showers might be nice, you know, to help wash away some of the shame and abandonment. Don't you think, Bert? <laughs> and uh, how's next week's weather look? Bleak! Overcast! So foggy you can hardly see in front of your face. Like you can't make out what your future might look like, but you know you'll be alone! Rain's gonna fall in sheets and buckets and torrents, and yet the white hot failure you can't erase is going to radiate like a blistering, banking, sizzling, searing, fiery hot sun! It's going well, 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 thank you for that update, Chris. We'll check back in with you in a few. Maybe after somebody brings you a few steps back from the brink of your hopelessness. Unlikely. We'll check back in with the weather once Chris is finished having his emotional crisis. <laughs> a hat was found hanging in a tree in downtown Woodridge. The woolen head garment is red, has a bobble, and was located by local resident Gina Pert. Pert, 43, was just walking along when she looked up and saw it hanging there. We take you now live to our on-the-spot reporter, Carrie Oakey. Carrie, what are you seeing out there? Bert, I'm here downtown at the scene of the finding, and let me tell you, we're getting a real sense of the drama that unfolded here just a few hours ago. Miss Pert was walking along this very stretch of sidewalk when the object, later confirmed to be a hat, was located. Hmm. And what can you tell us about this alleged hat, Carrie? Well, Bert, right now it's hard to say. Law enforcement is running a very tight ship because this is technically an ongoing investigation. Have they released a statement? They have, Bert. Released only moments ago, the statement reads, we are running a very tight ship because this is technically an ongoing investigation. We now give you an exclusive interview with Whipper County Sheriff Joel Ego. <laughs> Sheriff Ego, what can you tell us of this incident that occurred earlier today? Fascinating. And what does this mean for the owner of the hat? Remarkable. And what would you like the public to know of how you are handling this case? We're running a very tight ship because this is technically an ongoing investigation. But basically what happened is a woman found a hat in a tree. Wow. Just wow. Back to you, Bert. This has been an ongoing investigation about a woman who found a hat in a tree, folks. We'll keep you updated with any pertinent information as it comes in. And now it's time to check in with our sports corner. I believe we have a new addition to the team this week, don't we, Bert? Right you are, Janice. 
Joining us in the sports corner is our new sports analyst, Rick O'Shea. Rick, how are the sports doing these days? Hello, Channel 5! We are circling the wagons, batting down the hatches, and girding all loins for a wild week of competitive sports, let me tell you. This week brings us, brings us the playoff conclusion of the Underwater Hockey League, where the Almond Town Alligators will take on the jumping jellyfish of Jenkins County. And let me tell you, that's going to be one crazy climax to an already exhilarated season of submerged puck slapping and goalkeeping. Make sure to bring your masks and your snorkels, because it's going to be a wild one, people. Over on the other side of town, you can expect to see a back-breaking and riveting round of wife carrying as we get a rematch from last season. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Dietrich Georgson carrying his wife Eula up against Ryan Hart-Marzanovich carrying his own wife Bertha May. And let me tell you, it's going to be exciting, ladies and gentlemen. They set off from the starting line at 4.30 a.m. on Wednesday. And let me tell you, Bert, we're expecting a big crowd. Is that right, Rick? That's right, Bert. All right. And uh, whose spouse do you expect will be hurled across the finish line first, Rick? That is a tough matchup for sure. But you know what? I think I got to give it to Ron Harbarzanovich and his wife Bertha May. They have an intensity to them that's always been hard to match. Plus, strong German bones. <laughs> Sounds like a doozy. Indeed, Bert. But last but not least is the one you've all been waiting for. It's been hotly discussed at the water coolers, on the internet forums, and most importantly, in last week's issue of Dairy Farmers Weekly. That's right. Drum roll, please. It's the 2018 College Cheese Rolling League! <laughs> Woo! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We get to see an entirely new category be released. The Soy Cheese Wheel is making its first appearance. And let me tell you, Bert, this is going to be a nail biter, Bert! Woo! The Webster University Gorlocks are taking on the Conway Wampus Cats, and you know how those Wampus Cats like to show up and cheer on their feline friends, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I am so excited. The next head-to-head -head pits the Shelley University Russets up against the 2017 College Cheese Rolling League champions, the Savannah Sand Knights. Oh, I am so excited for this. This is going to be great. I'm sure all of you at home will be watching. I sincerely doubt it, Rick. Hey, how's it looking for the end of the baseball season? Uh, what, what was that, Janice? You wanted to know about the ostrich races? Wait, no, that's not, that's not what you said. You said something about baseball? Uh... Okay, that's all the update we need. Thanks for keeping us filled in on the most popular and relevant sports this week, Rick. <laughs> you got it, Bert, and I'll see you next time on the Sports Corner. I sincerely doubt we'll be seeing you in the Sports Corner next week, Rick. Have fun watching the cheese rolling and being unemployed. Will do, Janice! <laughs> yeah -ha! Hey, let's see if we can get a weather update, shall we? Chris, anything new on this week's weather? No. All right. After the break, our on-the-spot reporter, Carrie Oakey, will give us an update on the situation in Woodridge regarding the owner of the hat found in a tree. Bert here will be learning how to make a blueberry cheesecake in 12 easy steps. Absolutely, Janice. And it'll make you anything but blue. <laughs> and I will bring you tonight's top story, wherein a new study shows that 97% of office workers do nothing but stare at their cubicle walls, questioning every decision they've ever made. <laughs> that and more after the break. For Action 5 News at 5, I'm Janice Funkelmeyer. And I'm Bert Flapjack. And we'll see you after the break. <laughs>
around here might be enchanted with a little bit of magic so as to give my wish a better chance. Yes, that'll have to do. Here goes nothing. Oh, ancient magical stapler. <laughs> I wish I may, I wish I might. Grant me some quiet, peaceful work time tonight. Today, um, give me the beautiful silence and, um, uh, Let's see, um, stapler from another dimension. <laughs> Grant me the, uh, uh forget it, forget it. <laughs> Better get cracking. <laughs> the Billingsley account isn't gonna finish itself. <laughs> <laughs> Floor? Well, of course I am, because I have the... Uh... Wait, hold on. Hold on, what's, wait. Encouragement Fairy! Did you not specifically make a wish a few seconds ago? Uh, I mean, I was just talking to myself and I... I guess I wished for a peaceful day of work? Bingo! Use the W word, all right. I'm here to make sure that wish becomes a reality. Okay, well, I'm not really sure how this is gonna increase productivity. Besides, what are people gonna think when they walk into my office and see? No, 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 no. Haven't you seen a, a Christmas Carol that you could no. see? All right, well, what do you plan on doing to fulfill my wish? Well, I can't stop other people from distracting you, but I can help by, um, Reducing frustration and uh, giving some helpful feedback? Feedback? Look, I don't have to. Carissa! Yes, Mr. Lippman. Sylvia just called in sick, and I need this report done for Macmillan by this afternoon. Uh, but, sir, the Billingsley account. I know, I know, but Billingsley doesn't get here until tomorrow. Silverman and Macmillan will be here at 2 p.m. Could you have it on my desk by 3? You got it, no problem. Right, that's three, that's three p.m. Yes, sir. If only he could hear the things I was thinking, cause it sure wasn't. Sure, you got it, no problem. Oh, there goes my lunch hour, perfect. I can't believe it, Sylvia, again. I swear I do half her workload. That woman gets a hangnail and she calls in sick. Heck, if her neighbor gets a hangnail, she calls in sick. Here's the last entry in here. I wrote it last week when she had to take her dog to the vet. Aw, what's wrong with her doggy? Heck if I know, probably had a hangnail. <laughs> well, your boss is your boss, and I thought it was nice of you to take off the extra work. 
Huzzah! Was I all so nice when he asked me to do this last week? <laughs> you betcha, I'm the can-do gal. I'm the nice one. <laughs> Always count on Carissa. Uh, good job. <laughs> Boop. Carissa! <laughs> Hello, Sheila. I am so glad I caught you here. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, this is my office. I'm usually in here from... Nine to five on work days. Oh, Carissa, you're an absolute riot! <laughs> Listen, I need your help. I've got a problem. Problem, huh? What seems to be the problem? I am so glad you Me asked. Too. An emergency development meeting was scheduled for 11. Hello? Does anybody check with me? No. I've already got a meeting scheduled with Silverman. I can't back out of that. You know Silverman. It took me three weeks to schedule that meeting. You gotta help me, Carissa. You gotta go to that 11 o'clock meeting for me. You're the only one I trust to do this. Aw, oh, Sheila, normally I'd be happy to, but today I have a boatload of work to do. Could your secretary go and take notes for you or something? She can't. She's taking an early lunch with Sylvia. Okay, well, what about this? Wait, Sylvia? Sylvia was supposed to be sick today. Oh, well, sick, but not sick. You know, she just needed a break, a mental oh. health day. Anyways, do you, what do you think, Carissa? Can you make it work? I'd really, really, really appreciate it. Sure, you got it, no problem. I knew I could count on you. Thanks a million. I knew I could count on you. Thanks a million. <laughs> <laughs> Until you mocked her behind her back, uh, I thought you reacted commendably by uh, going to that meeting. Yeah. Yeah, you! Are you feeling in encouraged yet? <laughs> okay then. Uh, I am my last nerd. If I can't get some peace and quiet to get my work done, I'm going to have a coronary, I'm going to blow a blood vessel, I'm going to lose my oh, 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 Carissa! I'm so glad I could find you here. <laughs> Phil and I had another fight. Again. And he just sends me roses. Again. Because roses fix everything. Phil. <laughs> Colleen. I'm really I'm sorry, but you can come back. I don't know. Tomorrow I have time. Right now I have this 11 o'clock meeting to go to and the Macmillan account to finish my two. Yeah, he told me that he wouldn't even help me finish the dishes because my hamburger helper was so bad. <laughs> he said, he said that my hamburger helper wasn't helping <laughs> anybody. I mean, I'm trying, Phil. I'm doing my best, Phil. I would encourage you. That's it. <laughs> You are the straw, Colleen. Congratulations, you are the straw. Every day you come in here telling me about some fight you had with Phil. You guys have been married three months and you've had at least 47 fights. How do any two people have that many things to fight about? And you know what? Your cooking stinks! My grandmother can cook better than you and she's dead. Get out of my office! I have work to do. Get a life. See a counselor, do the sub work, am I the only idiot in this nut house who works? Uh, I'm sorry I bothered you. I'm sorry about Gram 2. I'll let you get back to work. Uh, go over what you did well in your interaction with the lead. You resisted the urge to throw your stapler at her. <laughs> and, um, well, I would encourage you to never, ever do that again! And I'd also encourage you to go, go fix that mess you just created. And I'd also encourage you and every day is a job, not a sprint. This isn't the first last bad day that you've had, and it certainly won't be the last. Keep trying and don't forget. Put others above yourself. It may feel like the last straw, but there are bound to be frustrations, and that's what I'm here for. Oh, whoa, 
know what? I gotta go. Plenty of other people too. Oops. Very open. Encourage! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Or the latest celebrity gossip. You name it, the Super Sockets 5000 will find it and put it on your face and in your face. That's the two dimensional technology at work. On the face and in the face. In the face? <laughs> but how does it put information in your face? How about aerodynamics? Do you feel like you're slicing through the winds like a well aircraft? I mean, think I'm moving along? Right. But are you slicing? Well. Slicing! <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. I could have a little less resistance. Darn tootin' you could. Here, put this on your noggin. Our Slippery Wicked 4.0 is the most high-tech, cranial slickening cap in production. Because of its patent-pending polymer, it is five times less resistant to oxygen in our atmosphere than the bald human skull. Simply put, it makes your head go... Through the air like a hungry falcon diving for a field mouse. <laughs> it's one of the many things you don't have that will make running more enjoyable. And easier too. In your face! <laughs> well, thanks, but I think I'm just going to keep going the old-fashioned way. 
I'm having a hard time concentrating with all of this. Well, you can stick with your old-fashioned techniques. Go for it. So just know, the fastest, best, most intense runners are covered head to toe in our gear. That's right. They got it on their face and in their face. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Thanks, but I better get back to it. Loser. Tell me, dude. Okay, open road. Me and no extra gadgets in my sight line or on my head to take my attention from my running. This is better, much better. I bet I'm burning like a billion calories right now. But hey, I can stand to lose a couple pounds here and there. Hey, there's that new shiny office building. Wow. I think this exercise is really starting to show. Okay, Gerald, okay. You are looking pretty good. Pretty good indeed. I mean, it's hard work. I guess it's got to pay off sometime, right? Look at those calves. That's a new set of calf muscles right there. I don't think I've ever looked quite this good in my entire life. Maybe I should schedule a press conference so everyone can see how good I look. Oh no, how long have I been staring at myself here? Do you think she saw him twirl? What's my man calves? Better get back to it. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. She saw him twirl. I knew it. Oh, man, you're really doing this, uh cross-country run without stopping me, huh? <laughs> uh, I, I heard about you from a friend when I saw you running by. I thought you was for, for real. Um, I mean, you really think you can do it, huh? Great. This is what I need. Someone asking me questions. Distracting me. Uh, yeah, sure. If I just stay focused and keep breathing, keep my eyes on the prize, as they say, sure. Well, um, don't take this the wrong way, but I'm one of the ones who can't wait to see how this all ends. I think you're going to be very disappointed. Disappointed? Disappointed in what? You know, the finish line. What about the finish line? It's not what you think. Nobody's going to be waiting at the other end. What? Sure they will. If I just keep this up, then I'm sure... Your parents? I'd be going in circles. I'm pretty sure I've seen you pass by here a couple times. Well, actually, does that tree look familiar? Have I seen that car before? No. I've been, been pointing towards the sun this entire time. You must be mistaken. Thanks for your concern, though. Well, you can keep kidding yourself if you want to, but. You should know there's a lot of people out there making jokes because you're heading in the wrong direction. Well, I... Hey, you know what? Why don't you join me? It's not so bad if you just stay focused. You could, you know, pick up the pace and run. This way for a while. Yeah, right. I'm not going to be caught running with you in circles, staring into the sun to find yourself. If you want to keep it up, it's your prerogative. If you want to do this thing, which is utterly pointless, I might ask, go ahead. But what are you going to get out of it? A medal? A 30 second blurb in the local news? What a waste. See you later. No, you won't, because I'll be at the Nah. Jeez. Some people don't have anything better to do with their time than needle other people. 
I mean, I'm not dragging her along behind me. Why doesn't she just keep walking? Okay, well, I'm starting to work up a real sweat here. Into the nose, off the front. That's it. Here's your something. There's a lot more to go. How come every time you sit down with more than two people, there's always a noisy chewer? It's so gross. Oh yeah, and then there's the people that scuff their feet when they walk, like, <laughs> just everywhere. Oh, and don't even get me started on people who take food off my plate. I mean, it's, it's my food. Just get your own, right? It's so annoying. Alex, I hope you know you have a serious talent for just finding something horribly wrong with everyone you've ever met. What can I say? It's a gift. <laughs> Man, you wonder why you're not dating anyone. Hannah! No, it's okay. I can take it. Hey, all I'm saying is maybe you should just accept people with their quirks. Am I lying to see more than just the food scraping and loud chewing and food grabbing? Food stealing, Hannah. It's food theft. People who take french fries should be locked up with shoplifters. <laughs> Alex, have you ever heard of Sherry? No. <laughs> wild idea that you should be generous with what you have. You know, like how you're sitting in my car while I'm driving you to the concert that I happen to have extra tickets okay, for no. and generously shared with you. Okay, that is completely different. Oh, okay. I mean, it's food. Uh, not me. <sighs> Dang it. I'm waiting for some socks I ordered to ship. My phone's dead. Oh, it's just Facebook. Somebody tagged me in a photo and now every time one of their cousins clicks like, my phone lets me out. That is another one of my pet peeves. Of course it is! Hey, hey guys, how about this? How about we make a list of everything wrong with Alex? <laughs> well, first off, there's his face. Hey, I didn't know you oh. that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, how much further do we have to go? I don't want to see opener. Oh, I can check. Uh, no, it's okay. I can get it. I already have it right here. Looks like another, uh, 30-ish minutes. There might be some traffic. That's fine. We'll still get there in plenty of time. Yeah. It's me again. Which obscure relative liked the photo this time? No, it, it's my dad, actually. He sent me a novel of a text message. Wait. Hey, 
Why don't you let one of us read it to you? Yeah, eyes on the road. Sorry, it's one of my many pet peeves. Oh. Hey, watch it! Yeah, pay attention to what road. Were you trying to hit a squirrel or something? What was that? Sorry. Hey, are you okay? What's wrong? Well, maybe you should try these on. <laughs> Ow! Um, I'm fine. Sorry. I'm okay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm good. Um, I think we just passed our exit. Let me see your phone. Oh, I, I can check. Okay, let's just keep our eyes here and our hands- Don't touch me right now, okay? Hey, we can look it up, really. It's no problem. Yeah, well, what's the address again? Okay, Allison, seriously, now's not the time. Hey, put the phone down! Watch out! <laughs> accident that is about to occur on Highway 30 near the Pinewood exit. The defendant in question is one Allison Miller. Prosecution, are we ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. May we please have the witness to the stand. Raise your right hand. The testimony that you shall give in this case, in this court, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. There are no secrets or hidden facts in this courtroom. Do you understand and acknowledge this? I, I guess so, yes. You may be seated. Your witness, counsel. Miss Miller, is it true that you were born in the year 2001? <laughs> yes. That would make you 17 years old, is that correct? Yes. How long have you been driving? About two years now, I guess. Wait, why am I here? I'm confused. Miss Miller, you've known Alex Burris for quite some time, is that correct? Um, we were neighbors growing up, and we've always come to church together. Would you say you have a stronger friendship with him than some of your other friends? Uh, he's like a brother to me, but what is that? Brother, you say? Well. Miss Miller, wouldn't you agree that an older sister has an obligation to keep her younger siblings safe? I suppose, yes. Some might say, of course. Miss Miller, you seem unsure. No, I mean, yes, I, I just... Very well. Miss Miller, are you aware that using a cell phone while driving is not only a ticketable offense, but is a crime punishable by law? What? My phone? Oh no. Yes, Miss Miller. You took your eyes off the road. You were behind the wheel of your vehicle and you made the decision to answer a text. Is that not correct? I read it. I, I mean, I read them. Yes. And are you aware that by taking your eyes off the road and answering a text, you endangered, no, devalued the lives of yourself and the passengers present in your vehicle, including that of Mr. Burris? No, I just... You just nothing. You stop looking at what is ahead of you because of a distraction, a gadget, and because no! of this... It was from my dad. He texted me to say that my mom's diagnosis had come back. Yes, it is true that your mother was awaiting some results, is that correct? Yes. Leukemia. Can't you see that I was distracted? I just gotten a text that my mom is probably going to die and I was on my way to some concert and- I'm aware of your situation, Miss Miller, yes. What was I supposed to do? Just not look at it? I mean, Miss Miller. What? Is it or isn't it true that you took your eyes off the road? Yes, I did. Are you aware of the consequences of such a decision? But I was distracted. We were all talking, and the text came through, and the first few words were, "The doctor just called." 
What was I supposed to do? I had to look down. Things out of my control were happening. And, and, the, and the people in the car were being loud. And, and why does my mom have to be sick anyway? Why? Miss Miller? You looked away. I know, but you looked away. Where else was I supposed to look? Let the record show the defendant looked away. I have no further questions, Your Honor. People of the court, defendant, prosecutor, this, as you know, is a bench trial where the verdict will be decided by the court alone, aside from a jury. I would now like to address the defendant directly. Ms. Miller, the evidence is clear. When given the opportunity, your external circumstances aside, you chose to look away from the road when you most needed to keep your eyes ahead. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Prosecution, are you seeking maximum, maximum punitive damages? Yes, Your Honor. Very well. The verdict of this case is as admitted. Guilty. Wait, wait, no. What can I do? How, how can Ms. I- Ms. Miller, your sentence must be carried out one way or another. I suggest you listen very carefully. Ms. Miller, in accordance with your wrongdoings, the court has decided to deliver you a sentence of mercy. What? I, I, I don't understand. The court has decided to absorb your punitive damages and deliver a sentence of mercy. But you just said I was guilty. I'm, I'm confused. Your sentence must be carried out one way or another, as is law, but it will be done so on a substitutionary basis. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that the substitute be identified. Very well. I will serve as the substitute. But, 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 but you haven't done anything. I am aware of your situation, Ms. Miller. But how? Your sentence must be carried out one way or another. No, no, this is my fault. This is all spinning out of control. Allison, you're not okay now, but you will be. Miss Miller, do you accept the terms laid out in the mercy sentence? I. You're not okay now. I. But you will Ms. be. Miss Miller, do you accept? Yes.